So the thing that I want to talk about with you guys today, right, because I want to give you guys value, I want to give you guys something that's a little bit tangible that you can leave here with, because I know some of you are in the standard, some of you aren't, but regardless, I want you guys to leave here with something. It's three steps, right? Three steps that can start you guys' journey to wherever you're trying to go for success, for building a community, whatever it is. But I want to give you guys three steps that I learned that was very helpful for me that I think are going to be very impactful for you. So is that fair for everyone in the room? Yes, sir. Awesome. So step number one, this is the most important thing. If you're taking notes, whether it's on writing, you know, on your iPhone, whatever it be, this is the most important thing. And this is what held or holds a lot of people up. Especially if you're in that position as a man where you're drifting, you kind of don't know where you want to go, right? It's a very dangerous position to be in, right? It's a very uncomfortable position to be in. But step number one is you have to have the courage to start. You have to have the courage to start. And I know it's like, okay, everyone says that, right? But I, I want to give you guys a little bit of, of a story because I think that always kind of connects and drive the point home. Um, so what I call this is the Chick-fil-A store. Everybody say Chick-fil-A. Chick right. So when I was in college, right, at Georgia Southern University, we had this Chick-fil-A on campus, right, and it was in uh, what's called the Union, right? And the Union is literally like where everyone hung out on campus. So like as soon as class ended, everyone came to the Union. You know, uh, girls would come there, the frats would come there, the student orgs would come there, people trying to sell stuff, everybody would go to the Union. And in the Union, there was a Chick-fil-A, and I'm talking about this was like, the Chick-fil-A was always packed, right? So I remember this particular day, I go in the Union, want some Chick-fil-A, uh, number one to be exact, brownie on the side, uh, lemonade, light ice, if you must know, three Polynesian sauces, two ketchups, <laughs> right? That, that's my thing, that's just my thing, right? And I remember I walk into the Union, and the line is literally going from inside the Union, or inside the Chick-fil-A, wrapped all the way down, literally outside of the Chick-fil-A, right? So I'm like, oh my God, man, I got like 15, 20 more minutes before my next period. Like, I, I didn't think it was gonna take this long. I, I thought I was gonna, you know, be in and out, right? Should have known better though, because it's the union show. So I go to this line, and as I'm looking at the line, right, there's this one big line, I see three registers, right? And on the other two registers, I see some people behind them. So what do you guys think I start thinking to myself? Are those lines open? What? Why is nobody else in the other lines? I mean, I, I can see that they're open. I see that there's people behind them, right? But nobody else is in the line. So I'm in this really interesting space because at this point in time, I have either two decisions to make, right? Two decisions, very, very simple. Decision number one, I stay in this long line, probably go late to my class to get this Chick-fil-A number one, right? <laughs> right, just I gotta bite the bullet, I'm hungry, I can't do another hour lecture without having some food in my stomach. I'm sorry, professor, I'm, I'm coming in late, right? Or option two is that I take the risk to go in that open line, right? Now here's the thing. Here's the thing, and this is the tough thing that, that, that roots a lot of people. What do you guys think is the main reason why, a lot, even though a lot of people probably saw what I saw, they probably saw that opportunity, they probably saw the other line, what do you think is the main reason that rooted people and stopped them from taking the chance? What do you think it is? Insecurity. Insecurity, what else? Fear of embarrassment. Fear of embarrassment, that's huge. What else? Having doubts. Having doubts. Conformity. Conformity. All of those are beautiful. All of you are exactly right. The first thing is the fear of being wrong. See, as human beings, we have this need, right, to be accepted. We have this need to be in packs. And that's not, it's not a bad thing if you're in the right pack. But sometimes, for a lot of us, we aren't. Right? So we allow the, the opinions, the possibility of going into the line and being wrong to weigh way more than the possibility of being right. But here's the trick, and here's the interesting thing, right? Worst case scenario, I go on the other line, right? And they say, look, bro, no, we're not open. We're actually just here behind the register so we can embarrass people like you to come to the front of the line so we can then tell you to go to the back of the line, right? That's worst case scenario. And let's be honest, I don't know if it's taking or putting that many more extra minutes on when I'm going to get my meal anyway, because I already was having to wait a long time. 
Like the line's already long, so adding an extra three to five minute wait time really isn't gonna make or break me. But what do you guys think happens if I take the chance and I'm right? What do you guys think happens? <sighs> I win. But guys, even more powerful, the time delay, right? Right, because I was able to take the chance and start, what was a 30 minute you know, situation beginning now becomes a 30 second situation. And that's what I think a lot of you guys, what, what I wanna impart on you is I know it, it, it's, it's terrifying sometimes to start, right? And for a lot of you, most of us are way more aware than we give, our credit, our, we give credit to. Most of you know the thing that you need to do. Most of you know the direction that you need to go. Most of you see it. But a lot of times what happens is that fear plants you. The opinions of other plants you. The wrong community plants you. And what could have turned, what could have been a day situation now turns into a decade situation because you don't have the courage to start. So now 10 years goes by and you're like, man, honestly, I can't do it anymore. I gotta do something different. But what if you just would have had the courage to start in the beginning, right? To take the chance, right? When I went to Georgia Southern College and Adam Hazlip came up to me and he asked me, hey, would you be willing to be a part of this organization called Pathways to Success? I easily could have been like, mm, I don't know, that seems kind of lame, right? Because I'm an athlete. I'm coming from the world of like, yeah, student government, these guys are dorks, right? Mock trial, like, uh, you guys are lame, right? You have athletic bone in your body. You've been forced into this. Imagine if I would have made the decision and said no, right? If I didn't have the courage to start, if I cared too much about all these other past people's opinions, right, the wrong community, imagine what would have happened. Right? I wouldn't have been here today. I wouldn't have had that community. I would have had the inspiration of seeing guys that look like me that elevated my perception of what I considered was dressing well, or what I considered was branding, image. It wouldn't have happened. I promise you. 